Uh, thank you for uh, attending. Welcome to our home. It's been a while. And um, this lecture is going to be more of a personal nature on my thoughts, I'm calling it After Having COVID again. I've written hundreds of my thoughts throughout the years, but this one has to be probably one of the most difficult. It made me think, of, you know, olden times, back in the days when we used to use a paper and a typewriter. You know, you begin to put down your thoughts only to pull the paper out and start again and again and again. Somehow I've written this thought a thousand times in my mind. I just could, couldn't put it into words. But the time has come for me to express my personal thoughts again after having COVID. Both my wife and I have recently recovered from COVID. We were not vaccinated. And though we have been sequestered and have taken many precautions, we both knew that it was just a matter of time before we would be infected. My wife does not believe in the vaccinations and I live with a simple belief, happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. I uh, do believe that people should have a choice as to what they do with their bodies. After all, we do live in a democracy, the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Words. Somehow, those, there are those that believe that if you don't vaccinate, you are a villain or even worse. If you don't vaccinate, you can lose your job, you can lose your friends, and even lose your family. It strikes me funny that there is so much conversation about a woman's right to her own body, even to the extent that there are those who want to allow a mother to kill a baby that has already been born. She can decide for herself as to what she wants to do with her body, but I can't. How is that logical? The vaccinated are afraid of those that are not vaccinated. Again, not logical. It should be those that are not vaccinated that should be afraid. After all, isn't that why you get vaccinated? Somehow it doesn't seem to make a difference whether you're vaccinated or not. Even with the booster, people are still contracting the virus. There seems to be a false belief that if you are vaccinated, then even if you contract the virus, it won't be as difficult. Well, I find that to be a lie. I have friends who have been vaccinated and they've experienced in some cases even worse symptoms than I had to endure. It was a cold, uh, no fun, but when is it ever fun to be sick? You know, they keep talking about the science and somehow there are always more than one opinion. In, in a court case, both sides bring expert witnesses. And, and how is that possible? You would think that truth is truth and there can only be one opinion. Wrong. Any opinion that does not follow what the news wants us to believe is banned. Well, whatever happened to freedom of speech? Do we really need big government and big pharma to make our decisions for us? Are we all really that stupid? You know, being an Orthodox Jew, many of those pro-vaccinators have accused me of everything from murder to being sacrilegious. All of a sudden, they have become God's prophets. Where were they before? Do they really know what the Torah says about the issue? You know, the Talmud is replete with the sages debating with one another, searching for truth. For the most part, their debates are based on logic and a mutual respect. There are those that will tell you that Jewish law is decided by majority opinion. Well, in most cases, that is a fact. However, the Shulchan Aruch, the code of Jewish law states, and I quote, that even if it was the majority opinion, however, when you have two doctors who say that there is a risk of death, even if a hundred doctors say there is no risk, we listen to the two doctors. The Mishnah Brewer explains, Velo Oslinum Vassar Rov Deos, which means we have an explicit Shulchan Aruch telling us that when it comes to Bikuach Nefesh, matters concerning life and death, we don't follow the majority. You know, I find it sad that in nature we see that in a forest fire, the lion and the deer run side by side. We, human beings, even family, attack each other. How is that acceptable? Is there any greater pain in life than being attacked by your friends, people whom you have laughed and cried with? How is it that family members can choose sides? 
at a time when the greatest medicine should be love and understanding. You know, the piece of wood, ask the piece of metal. Why is it that when you cut into me, it's so quiet? But when you cut through another piece of metal, it's so loud. And the piece of metal answered that when your brother hurts you, it's much more painful. You know, I spent the holiday of Sukkot with my wife, Alona, and our sukkah. We both had COVID. I sat there and I cried. It was my 75th birthday. And I was crying that friends and family were taking sides. Things that were being said, no longer only thoughts. And at a time when we should be mending wounds, not opening them. You know, they tell a story about a man who came to the United States from a small town in Eastern Europe. He became very successful. One day, his younger brother came to the States to visit him. He came to his brother's mansion and the butler answered the door. And he told, he said, tell your master that his brother has come to visit. Well, the butler returned and said, my master said, he doesn't have a brother. The younger brother then told the butler, go tell your master to prepare himself for death. The rich brother came running down to the doorway, furious. He said, what do you mean I'm going to die? I just had a checkup and the doctor told me I'm in the best of health. Well, the younger brother replied, as you know, in the town that we grew up in, there, there was no doctor. And so I had to administer whatever medical assistance I could to the townspeople. It was my experience that when a person no longer recognized his brother, he was about to die. Yes, there were those who broke my heart. And I'm not sure what the end of the story will really be. Can we mend a broken heart? I hope so. But the question becomes, will the scar remain for life? Being an Orthodox Jew is not easy. Not because of all the rules and regulation. Well, that's easy. Finding a place to truly forgive, no matter how deep the pain, well, that is Herculean. And that is what we ask of God, and that is what God demands of us. I grew up as a child with the saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. You know, better sticks and stones, the wounds will heal. If you break a bone, when it heals, the bone is even stronger than it was before the break. Words, hmm, words cut to the core. I begin my prayers every morning with the words, I accept upon myself the positive commandment to love my neighbor as myself. This is not a commandment to love lovable people. No, it's a challenge from God Almighty to love difficult people, especially in difficult times. The deeper the love, the deeper the pain, the greater the challenge. I don't know if I'm up to the challenge. I can only pray and ask my Father in heaven to give me the strength, the wisdom, the fortitude to truly forgive and move on. You know, the Hebrew word for joy is simcha. It is derived from the Hebrew word shemocha, which means to forget. The only way that we can find true happiness in life is to forget the hurt and pain and focus on the good. There is a reason that when God created the world, it states, vayi era, vayi voker, and it was evening and it was morning. God is telling us that no matter how dark the night, we can always look forward to the light of another day. I would like to end this thought with something that my youngest sister texted me after I thanked her for all of her well wishes and concern during our bout with COVID. She wrote these words, I did nothing, but there was nothing that I wouldn't have done. Her warm and loving words brought tears of joy to my eyes. I ask God constantly to forgive, not pardon all of my transgressions. I somehow have to find it in my heart to not only pardon, but forgive those who have hurt me so deeply and turn the tears of sorrow into tears of joy. And with that, may we bring in the coming of Mashiach Sikano now. I want to thank you for listening. I know it's very personal. And I know some people will agree, disagree. But again, we need to be able to talk. We need to be able to be honest with each other. But most of all, we need to love each other. You know, hate is a very easy emotion. 
love. <laughs> it's a four-letter word, but what a word. What a word. So let's embrace it, and let's love each other. Thank you very much for listening. Again, God bless you all. You should all be safe and happy, and uh, God should protect us all. Thank you.